Hello, my name is Marty Reyes and I'm one of the automation specialists here at Empire. And today I'd like to give you an overview of the Tosi Box product that we have and how to use it to connect remotely to your remote sites. So let's dive into that right now. So today we're going to be talking about remote access and making safe and secure connections. So down in the lower left hand corner here you can see our little Empire Automation guy and his superpower is connecting to remote sites safe and secure and he's using a virtual private secure channel to do that so you can think of that little red arc down there as his private little channel to connect to that hmi on the other side at a remote site you see he's still going through a public network that's our internet and connecting his two private networks together He's doing that through a secure channel or a secure tunnel that goes from his site to his remote site. And that's a good way to think of it. Think of it as a tunnel, your private own tunnel. Like back in the, this tunnel, you can see the guy back there and he's going through this tunnel and it's safe and secure. That's exactly what a VPN tunnel is. A VPN is a virtual private network that uses a public network and that's usually the internet to connect sites or users together. And here at Empire, we use a product called TosiBox. And that's our VPN solution or virtual private network to make connections safe and secure. So TosiBox uses a lock and key concept. On the right hand side here, you can see the lock. And then on the left hand side is the key. The key is on your end and the lock is on the remote site that you're trying to access and you can see there in the middle here you have a tunnel that's your own personal tunnel and it's a vpn tunnel virtual private network keeping you safe and secure so here is the tosi box line and we on the right hand side here we have the lock 150 that's the starting unit and then you can upgrade to a lock 200 and new to the 200 line is the lock 210 and the lock 250 and then uh, on the other end here we have the lock 500 and then finally at the bottom here we have the central lock so you may already be familiar with a service called ewan ewan uses a talk to m service that's a cloud service so here you see in the upper right hand corner this guy's doing remote access he talks to the cloud he connects to the cloud and then he talks to his remote site so he needs this cloud service which ewan says is free to a point uh, once you get so many units connected you're going to want to upgrade to their subscription service and of course that subscription service has a dollar value associated with it but you'll find with Tosi Box, we eliminate that middleman. The talk to M, talk to the middleman, that's gone. If you look down here at the bottom, we go from our PC straight through to the lock. And you have a secure tunnel. That, that tunnel I spoke of earlier, that's what this is. You go from device to device. So in this case, if I wanted to go from my PC, plug in my key, I authenticate, and then I have a secure personal tunnel my personal VPN tunnel from my PC to whatever device I have on the other side of that lock. It's a secure encrypted connection from device to device, from my key to my lock. So now let's look at how to scale with Tosi Box. On the upper left hand corner here, I have one key and several locks. So this one key can access more than one lock and it's actually an unlimited number of locks. So a good example would be your one key to your house might open up your front lock, your front door and your back door, your back lock, right? So you can have one key with many doors or many locks, right? And then on the right hand side here, we have many keys with one lock. So this would be the same case as I have a key to my front door, my wife has a key to the front door, and so does my son. So many keys open up a single lock. And then down below, we can give admin or administrative rights to the keys to, so we can restrict access to either certain ports or certain locks. So here on the left-hand side, you can see that this key has access to all three of these locks. 
and then on the right side this key only has access to the middle lock and then finally on number four here on the lower left hand corner um, this is a server lock and with a server lock you can maintain a constant connection to do data collection or build machine to machine networks so let's look at an example where we build a maintenance infrastructure over here in north america we have this single unit with one key and he can access these keys over here and then down here in south america as well and then you can see sub keys where other people are accessing those same locks over here and then down below in south america we also have other keys that can access some of these locks and then down below we here we have a soft key the soft key is a virtual key which can be emailed to someone and then reused on a different lock so again it's all about building a safe and secure connection you can do that with a vpn a virtual private network so enough talk right it's time to show you how that's done and here's where the fun begins i'm going to use my tosi box to connect three different ways and establish a vpn tunnel from my point to a remote site the first way i'm going to do it is i'm going to connect to a device that has a web service it's actually broadcasting a web service so i can connect to it remotely through a browser and in doing so generally you'll connect using an ip address or a url the second way i'm going to connect is using rdp or remote desktop and then finally i will connect to a device using automation software and the automation software that i'll be using today is the tia portal from siemens we're going to be using version 16. so as i said before we're going to connect to a device that has a web service so here you can see that i'm used, still using our vpn tunnel that's this yellow part right here so we establish that vpn tunnel and then we're going to connect to this hmi and here you can see at my local site we're using uh, dhcp so i'm establishing my ip address locally then i go through my vpn tunnel and once i'm at my remote site that subnet is 10 10 10 the hmi is on 10 10 10 20 so i'll make that connection and then we'll browse over using a browser into the hmi so let's do that to establish my vpn tunnel i need a key this is my tosi box key and this is what it looks like so we're going to take this and plug it into an available usb port so once i plug in my usb key i get this prompt for a password so let me take a minute and talk to you about two-factor authentication two-factor authentication is a really good extra step in protection i have two-factor authentication on my email accounts so when i log into my email account it prompts me for a password i enter in my password hit enter and then i get a text message on my phone it sends me a key that i can either okay or i'll have to type that in to my email account and then it lets me in that's two steps of authentication you get that same authentication here with tosi box first of all i need a key without that key i can't access my remote site as soon as i plug in my key i have to enter in a password two steps of authentication as soon as i plug in my key you can see it's contacting right now as long as i have an established uh, internet connection it will connect my key is making a connection to the lock and now it's authenticating now it's assigning an ip address and once it assigns an ip address and then connects you'll see all the devices that are connected to the lock and in this case this lock has a laptop with a webcam it has a siemens plc and that's a 1200 plc and it has a siemens comfort panel hmi and then you can see the ip addresses associated with those devices the laptop is on 10 10 10 66 and the plc is on 10 10 10 10 and the hmi is on 10 10 10 20 and that's what my diagram over here shows so now that we've made that vpn connection using our tosi box this little red line we have that tunnel now that the vpn tunnel is established i'm going to access the hmi which is at 10 10 10 50, 800 is the port 
I'm going to enter in a password to access the HMI and this brings up the HMI. So at our remote site, this HMI is sitting in our lab office and it's kind of dark in our lab office where this is. So we have a button here where we can turn on the lights around that demo. So now we're looking at the browser version of this. So we're not going to see the lights turning on and off, but that's what this button's for to turn on and off the lights around there. So the next thing I want to show you is that we do have that VPN connection from my site to the remote site. And if we disconnect, see here's disconnect. I'm going to disconnect that connection and you can see that right away my browser dropped out and it's trying to make that connection and it's going to keep trying to make that connection until it times out. And then eventually this browser is going to time out. And here you can see it timed out, right? So now I'm going to reconnect my VPN tunnel so I'm safe and secure again. So here you can see it's authenticating, it's assigning an IP address, it's verifying the connection, and then it should reestablish that connection. Okay, now we've reestablished our connection, and now my connection to the HMI has, has been reestablished. I'm going to type in the password again. And now you can see that it brings up the HMI that's being broadcast through the browser. And now I'm going to minimize these and move on to the second example here. And in this example, we'll use RDP or remote desktop and we'll make that connection again through our VPN tunnel, keeping safe and secure. Once we're into our remote site, we'll log into the remote computer, which is at 10, 10, 10, 66. We'll use that webcam to, to look at the actual HMI. Again, we'll be still be using DHCP locally and establishing a local IP address. Let's see how that's done. And now that we're ready to establish that remote desktop, I'm coming down over here where it says lab laptop webcam. And remember that's on 10, 10, 10, 66. And over here on the right hand corner, I can click on that to expose this where it says open remote desktop connection, RDP if available. And when I do that, it prompts me with this little window and I say connect. And then it's gonna want a password. I'll show you that screen here. And I type in the password. And we connect. And then you'll see as it connects here, it's gonna bring up a screen that shows you everything that's on that laptop that we're connecting to. Because we're using remote desktop, we can have full access to anything this laptop has access to. So if you had some proprietary software that you had on that laptop, you'd have full access it through our remote desktop connection. And here you can see it's dark, right? And that's what I said earlier. Um, I'm going to bring up the web browser and here is that button to turn on the lights. I'm going to click on that and then we're just going to navigate over to this button and turn on the lights. And you can see the light just came on because we're physically looking at that. And we can turn the light off and we can turn it back on. And now you can actually see that light working. This is remote access, right? That we're doing this remotely. And so I'm going to close down my remote desktop and I'm just going to leave this one open. And again, this is the example that we just ran through. We used a remote desktop connection. We connected to our internal network at our remote site and we used the laptop and the software that was available on the laptop to look back at this HMI through its webcam. Now let's move on to the third example. And in this third example, we're going to connect to a device with automation software. And the software, like I said earlier, that we'll be using is the TIA portal from Siemens. So let's do that now. Here I have the TIA portal brought up and you can see our two devices. Here's a PLC. This is the PLC that's over at our remote site. And this is the HMI that we're using and uh, we can turn on the IP addresses. And again, the PLC is at 10, 10, 10, 10, and the HMI is at 10, 10, 10, 20. Now, if we navigate to our screens 
on our HMI. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the remote or the um, root screen of that. And we're going to make a change really quick. And when we make that change, we're going to save it. We'll compile it and then we'll send it back out to the machine. So here's the screen and here's the root screen. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a graphic and I'm going to move it over and then we'll update that graphic. And then we'll add this graphic into here. We'll kind of format it so it looks right. And then we'll save our project. We'll compile it. And once it's compiled, we'll download it to our HMI on our remote site. And as the TI portal goes through its steps, I'll have one more step here before I can download it to the remote site. And now I can click load and send it over to the HMI at our remote site through our uh, VPN tunnel. Okay, it looks like that process has completed. And here's the change on my TIA portal at the local site. Let's take a look over at the remote site and see what that looks like. So I'm, again, I'm on the 10, 10, 10 uh, subnet over here at our remote site and you can see that it's done. Let's quickly bring up the remote desktop and have a physical look at that screen. So again, I'm coming here. I'm gonna connect through the RDP. I'm gonna enter in our password and then you'll be able to see our remote desktop come up here. And you can see the logo that we updated our HMI with is on our physical HMI at our remote site. And that completes our third example where we connected to a remote device with automation software. The software we use today was the TIA portal from Siemens version 16. We opened up the TIA portal, updated the HMI, we compiled it, and then we sent that change to an HMI at a remote site. And that will complete our demonstration today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Marty Reyes for Empire and have a nice day.